what's your read of the uh, Murray contract and take on it? From well, that? it's it's far worse than the Deshaun Watson deal, even though it was presented as better. Forty six point one million new money average. Deshaun Watson got forty six million, but that's only part of the story. Kyler Murray signed for seven years. The five year extension gets added to the two years already had. He's going to make under thirty eight million per year. Not that we need to have a bake sale for him, but when we're talking about comparing these contracts, that's far short of Deshaun Watson. And again, he's tied up for seven years. And he only has a hundred million, again, only. We should all be so underpaid. One hundred million in fully guaranteed money, where Watson has two hundred and thirty million. So Watson's deal much better. Watson was in a much better circumstance to get the Browns to put the money on the table that he did. He had four teams chasing him. Kyler Murray was under contract for two more years with two franchise tags after that. So he did the best deal that he could under his circumstances. And, Rich, it dawned on me this morning, I think what happened with Baker Mayfield, his very close friend and former Oklahoma teammate in Cleveland last year, I think at the end of the day that probably got Kyler Murray to take the deal because Baker Mayfield didn't take the best deal that the Browns would have given last year in week two, shoulder injury, his career goes haywire, and now he's just trying to hang on and win the starting job in Carolina. He, Kyler Murray sees that, I believe, and says, I'm taking the certainty, even though some of these basic factors pale in comparison to what Deshaun Watson got. So Arizona held the line, and by that I mean uh, they were the first – organization up after Watson signed his fully guaranteed deal um, and thus the Cardinals did not fully guarantee their deal and that uh, I think is something that I'm sure the other member clubs of the National Football League are, are pleased to hear does that mean um, they're free and clear the rest of the teams that the the Cardinals just kind of reset and recalibrated things on that level what is your sense on that well i guarantee right. you the ravens and owner steve bishotti who was one of the owners who spoke out about the watson deal at the league meetings in march will take that position and i said last year when josh allen got his contract lamar jackson should want that deal when deshaun watson got his contract lamar jackson should want that deal now that murray's deal is done the ravens should want jackson to take that same deal with maybe a little bit more thrown on top of it because it's only $100 million fully guaranteed. Here's the practical difference, and here's why I think the Cardinals didn't do it. I don't think that Michael Bidwell has the ability to put $169 million into escrow by March 31 of next year, which is what Jimmy Haslam has to do on the Watson contract. The way it works out, I had someone explain it to me at the time. $230 million fully guaranteed, contract signed this year. By March 31 of next year, $169 million had to be put in escrow. Some teams aren't going to have the cash on hand to do it. They've got the cash flow to pay the guy year in and year out, and the funding rule is in place to protect players against teams that may go out of business. Nobody's going out of business, not today. Maybe 50 years ago, but not today. The TV money is going to pay these contracts that the players are due. So you're going to have some teams that can afford – to fully guarantee because of this stupid funding rule that is grossly outdated, and some teams just can't. I suspect that Michael Bidwell can't, or at a minimum won't, put $169 million in escrow, and that's relevant to Joe Burrow in Cincinnati because if any owner isn't going to be willing or able mm. to put a gigantic ton of money into an escrow account, it's Mike Brown who has run the Bengals for decades. So that is where there's going to be a disconnect. So it creates an advantage for the teams that have the money, if you're competing for free agents and you can fully guarantee a deal, because some teams just aren't going to be able to do it. And I think that's the trend to watch going forward. We were talking about it just moments ago, Mike, is that uh, we, we, it, it wasn't lost on us that the Bengals are finally talking about putting somebody else's name on the stadium other than Paul Brown's and that they're selling some rights that they never thought or they never were interested in or never endeavored to sell and that could possibly be them saying, I'm going to have to, you know, B Brown or the Brown family saying they're going to have to cut a check to escrow for Joe Burrow in the somewhat near future. And maybe they're making a, it's like a, a capital raise that they're doing right now. What do you think? I think that makes a lot of sense, Rich. It's been a point of contention for years. Prior to the 2011 CBA, which came after an extended lockout, there were arguments among owners. And I heard a story about, 
and I, I assume it's been reported that Jerry Jones and Mike Brown got into it because of the failure of Mike Brown to fully capitalize his team. And Jerry Jones said, you know, I'll take those naming rights and I'll sell them in five minutes. You know, just an example of the way that Mike Brown wasn't maximizing his local revenue and living off of the shared revenue where he benefits from having a team like the Cowboys in the league that drives up the value of the TV deal. So I think that they're recognizing if we're going to keep Joe Burrow over the long term, if we're going to make him happy, if he's going to be satisfied here, we have to change the way we do things. And it's not just what we pay him. It's how we go about putting players around him. Now, they have yet to break from one of the most outdated practices in the league, which is refusing to guarantee money for veteran contracts other than quarterbacks beyond the first year. The Packers and the Bengals are the last two to hold the line there. The Bengals at some point are going to have to change that. They're going to have to do it with Jamar Chase. Are going to have a hard time keeping him? That's the downside of having a great team. It's expensive to have a great team. It's expensive to hold a great team together. And I think there are teams out there, and I think historically the Bengals have been one of them, that look at it and say, you know, we can still make a crap load of money. We can make a lot of profit by just kind of going through the motions and aspiring to be middle of the pack. You know, wins and losses go a long way toward determining a value of a team. Money in the bank is the ultimate determining factor. And the, the Bengals have been doing as well as anyone because they're sharing that massive money that comes through the league's coffers. So I, I think that this is a tangible sign that they recognize. If they're going to hold this team together now with Joe Burrow, they really do have to approach it more like a business than they ever have.